Hi, and welcome to The Public's Health, the show that puts you, the public, back into public health. I'm Dr. Tony Eiten. I'm the Alameda County Health Officer and Public Health Director, and this is your show, although it's a product of the Public Health Department. Today we have a fascinating combination of diseases that we're going to talk about, both of which are infectious diseases. First, we're going to talk about tuberculosis, and we're going to see a demonstration of how our tuberculosis control program in Alameda County manages the disease. And then we're going to give you a sneak preview of our interesting and educational West Nile virus video that we'll be playing over the next few weeks on this station. We're joined today by Karen Redwine, who's our chief nurse in our TB control program. Welcome, Karen. Thank you. And Danny Javier, who is a nurse case manager in the program and specializes in working with populations um, from the Philippines. Danny speaks Tagalog. Welcome, Danny. I thank you. It's nice to be here. So tuberculosis, worldwide disease, 8 million new cases every year, 3 million deaths, huge problem. How big a problem is it in Alameda County? It's a significant problem in Alameda County. Um, we have the, about the third highest case rate in Alameda County uh, uh, in the Bay Area. We're about five times the state um, average and wow. about ten times the national average. Um, we, ha we reported about 141 active TB cases to the state last year and managed about double that number in uh, people who reported as TB suspects or cases that we followed that were reported from other counties. Okay, so what is tuberculosis? What kind of disease is this? Give our viewers a sense of what we're dealing with. Well, tuberculosis is an infectious disease. Um, unlike the flu or a cold, it's not quite as contagious as those because it's only breathed in uh, in the air. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, passed by sh shaking hands or by uh, contact with any objects. So it has to be spread um, from a person who has active TB disease in their lungs, uh, coughing into the air, and um, a person who spends a significant amount of time sharing that air with that person may actually breathe in those germs and become infected. Um, once a person breathes in the germs, uh, their body may contain the infection. And in most cases, that is what happens. Uh, the body of, of a person with a healthy immune system is able to contain the infection. Let me, let me clarify that. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking down the street, and somebody who has tuberculosis in their lungs coughs up. And the, the organism comes out in their cough, and I breathe it in. It goes into my body. And it can stay there for a while. When you say contain, you mean I can control it in my body for a while. What's a typical length of time that somebody will control that kind of infection in their body? Well, it varies with the person's, the health of the person uh, with their immune system. Mm -hmm. A person with a healthy immune system throughout their lifetime may never develop active TB disease. They run about a 10% chance over their lifetime. 10% chance? Yes. Okay. Um, but when TB can become active is when a person has other illnesses that affect their immune system, such as uh, HIV, such as uh, diabetes, uh, other immune compromising diseases, uh, or just the aging process, stress, anything that affects your immune system can allow those bacteria that were once contained but still alive to become active, cause disease, can cause disease either in the lungs or actually any part of the body. Okay. Uh, people associate TB as being something that's a disease of the lungs only, but it actually can be anywhere in your body. And common sites might be lymph nodes, uh, bone, joints, uh, brain, spinal cord, virtually wow. anywhere. Okay, so that's, that's quite profound. Now, so there's a distinction then between somebody who's been infected with tuberculosis but is not yet showing signs and symptoms of an active infection, and then those who are, who are actively infected who may be coughing up tuberculosis or have it in one of those organ systems that you talked about and are experiencing real disease processes right. that could lead to death or, or... Right, and this causes a lot of confusion because TB has a latent state and an active state. So a person who is infected only, that means they um, have somebody near them has uh, coughed into the air, they've breathed in the germs, they're, they're in, the germs are in their lungs, they, uh, their body has contained that infection. As far as we know, we know that by they have a chest x-ray and the chest x-ray is normal. It's not showing any signs of active TB disease. Um, 
that person is not infectious to anyone else. They have a positive TB skin test, a negative chest x-ray, they're not having any symptoms, they cannot carry this to their family members, they are not a danger to anyone except themselves for going on to develop active TB disease at some time in their lives. And a person with active TB disease, uh, that person is ill. That person, you know, sometimes in the early stages of the disease, they may not feel ill. And it's not, uh, the symptoms of TB don't always send people directly to the doctor. Mm -hmm. um, the typical scenario is that a person may have a cough that kind of lingers for several weeks. Um, they keep thinking it's going to go away and it doesn't. They may have fatigue um, over and above what they would expect for what they're doing. Um, they may have symptoms like uh, chills and fever that come and go. Uh, they may have some weight loss, um, decreased appetite. Those are all typical symptoms, but not everyone has all of those symptoms or even any of those symptoms. Okay. So it's a little bit hard to diagnose, a little bit hard for people to get to the doctor when they're busy and think it'll go away. So you now, well, tell us first, how is TB treated? Well, TB is treatable and preventable, and that's the good news about it. Um, it. It requires a lot of treatment. I mean, it requires four different medicines that we use, and each of the medicines acts on the germ a little bit differently. So there's a lot of medicine initially, less medicine uh, during the uh, late or during the follow-up phase of the of the treatment, and the treatment really depends upon how the person is responding to the treatment depends on whether the organism, the strain of TB that they have, is susceptible to the main drugs that we use. And there are some tests that we do to determine that. Um, if it is susceptible to the main four drugs that we use, and if the person is responding well to treatment, then the treatment may only be six months or so. But if the person um, is not responding well, maybe they either their uh, strain of TB is not susceptible to one of those four main drugs, that means we have to use other drugs. It may take longer. It, the side effects of those other drugs may be significant. There are lots of factors um, that enter into this. And the TB treatment is, can be long. It can be anywhere from six months up to two years if a person has drug-resistant tuberculosis. Okay. And that two years may include some injections. And it's very difficult for people to take medicine over that period of time. But most people, you can treat it fairly readily. Yes, yes. Well, we're going to go now to uh, a little clip that we have which demonstrates how when somebody has been infected with tuberculosis, we at the Alameda County Tuberculosis Control Program can detect it in somebody and it's called a TB skin test. You've heard about it. We're now going to show you exactly what it is as um, our senior nurse demonstrates on a patient. Danny is going to be placing a tuberculin skin test on a household contact to an active TB case. And uh, he will start by um, explaining the purpose of the skin test and doing a brief interview with the patient uh, to make sure they haven't already had a TB skin test in the past uh, that was positive, and will be explaining the, the procedure and the reading of the test. Hi Val, I'm Danny. It's good to see you. Hi Danny. Okay, you are known to us on household contact with active TB. I'm here to give you a skin test for tuberculosis. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, you need to sign something for me for your permission. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to do is, I'm going to put a skin test in here. Do you have skin test done before? No. Is it negative? When was the last time I had to get that done? Do you remember? Couple years. Two years ago? Okay, sounds good. So the test is negative, right? Nothing, yes. nothing bad happened? Okay. Okay, I'm going to do is, I'm going to prepare my things. I'm going to give you this under your skin only, not inside, under the skin. As you can see, this is a brand new syringe, never been used. Okay? okay. We don't use, you know, we don't recycle syringes. And then I'm going to clean this one real quick. Clean this one too, and get a little bit of solution in the bottle. And I need you to keep still, don't move while I'm injecting you this solution. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. How are you today? I'm good. Did you work today? No. No? How lucky you are, huh? Okay, here we go. So whatever you feel, I don't want you to move your arm, okay? Okay. So you're gonna put this small one down here. 
It's very important that a TB skin test be placed correctly and it must make a bubble. It must make um, a bump that is visible and the bump remains for about an hour or so and then it goes away and then what we will be doing is in the next uh, two to three days uh, reading it for uh, swelling and measuring it if there is swelling and then um, referring the person if uh, that is indicated. Well Bob, you did a good job. Okay, I'll be back in three days to read your arm. Okay, but just do one thing for me. I don't want you to scratch this area or rub it. Okay? Okay. But you can do anything, like washing the dishes, you no know, cooking, and anything but scratching the area. Do you have any questions? No. Okay, Bob, thank you very much. Thank you. I'll see you in three days. Okay. This is an important message, so I'm, I'm going to ask you, Danny, to translate that into Tagalog. I'll be glad to. Uh, ako po ay nanawagan sa aking kapwa Pilipino para isipin natin ang tuberculosis ay huwag natin ipagwalang bakala. Ang tuberculosis po ay nakukuha dulot ng mikrobyo na nasa hangin na pag nating nahingahan ay tayo nagbibigay ng sakit na tuberculosis. Ang, pag, ang TB germs na ito ay pumunta sa ating katawan Ito po ay pwedeng pumunta sa ating uh, lalamunan, baga, bato, buto, at sa iba pang parte ng ating katawan. Uh, tayo po ay pwedeng mahawaan ng taong merong aktibong disease na ito kung siya po ay umuubo, bumabanhin, nagsasalita ng malakas, sumisigaw o kumakanta. Tayo po ay merong gamot para sa tuberculosis. Uh, importante po na tayo magpatangin kung tayo po ay may sakit na ubo, panghina ng katawan, lagnat, hindi makakain, namamayat, at mahina ang katawan. Importante po na tayo ay magpatingin sa ating mga doktor kung tayo po ay may, may, may mayroong um, sakit. Salamat po. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, now, I've got tuberculosis. And I go to the doctor, and the doctor diagnoses it and sends a report to the county health department. Tell us what happens from there. We receive the report into our main TB control office. Um, I review the, the information on the report. I may call the physician and clarify some information, get some additional information. I make a decision as to which nurse um, will follow up on this referral. And we do have, we are a countywide unit, so we cover all of Alameda County, but we have half of our nurses north and half south. So I may decide um, that this is a um, Tagalog speaking patient and lives in uh, the southern part of the county, so I may deploy this to Danny. And uh, if the patient is in the hospital, Danny will go and visit the patient in the hospital, make sure that the patient understands. Uh, what's going on, that he has tuberculosis or is suspected of having tuberculosis because we don't always know that initially. Um, we'll talk to the patient, we'll make sure that the patient is uh, on the right treatment, the right drugs, the right dosages. Um, we'll begin a contact investigation which entails finding out who the patient spends the most time with. Uh, it might be in the household, it might be at the work site. Um, just we'll get some basic information um, and we'll Basically, try, our, our role is to try to help this person uh, complete their treatment. Well, however long it is, we will be there, we will be involved, we will be uh, working with the physician in the community, um, we will be working with our medical director, Dr. Robert Benjamin, making sure that the treatment goes well, making sure that the patient has what they need to complete treatment. So maybe yeah. Danny can explain what he does when he actually goes and, and visits and a patient. Maybe in the you hospital. can do a little bit in Tagalog and a uh -huh. little bit in English. Then uh -huh. what we do is once I get the referral, I identify the patient who has a TB case who is who have TB disease. I review first all the paperwork, make sure you know I got the right thing to to go back with, and then um, I call the patient and make arrangement to do home visit, and then uh, during the home visit I explain to them or to him what is TB, uh, the mode of transmission, incubation period, the treatment, and the importance of compliance with the treatment. And in my, in my uh, Filipino uh, uh, crowd, what I do is explain to them how important it is to treat TB. 
and and then I, I, I do contact investigation. I ask, you know, who are you with, household wise, friends, at work, and I go from there. Um, and so then you would um, possibly place TB skin tests on people who have never had a positive correct. skin test before, and you would make sure that they get evaluated by their doctor correct. appropriately. Maybe a little bit in Tagalog for our mm -hmm. Tagalog uh, viewers. Kapag po tayo may TB sa bahay, pinupuntan po kayo ng public health na sa inyong bahay, at in-interview kayo, tinitingnan kung ano ang inyong sakit, kung ano dapat gawain, uh, kami po ang tutulong sa inyo para kayo gumaling. Uh, importante po, pag pumunta ko sa bahay ninyo, ay makinig sa amin para kayo igumaling. Uh, tinitingnan din namin na kung, kung sino ang mga taong inyong laging kausap, kasama sa bahay, kasama sa sakyan o sa trabaho, para sila ay ma-check at para hindi kumalat ng sakit na tuberculosis sa ating komunidad. As we know, Alameda County is a very diverse uh, county, which is one of our great strengths and assets. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, many different populations that come from countries in the world where TB, tuberculosis, is endemic, meaning yes. that it's commonly found there. Some of these countries use a vaccine called BCG. Perhaps yes. you can talk a little bit about that and talk about some of the other populations that we try to focus on to make sure that they're adequately aware of tuberculosis and how we uh, investigate and control it. Uh, yes, there are many countries in the world where uh, resources for, to fight TB are very limited. And so one resource that often is used is this vaccine called BCG. It's made from an organism that isn't even actually TB. It's a related organism. And it's made mostly to, um, the purpose is mostly to protect young children from the worst form of TB, which can progress to TB meningitis in the brain. Um, the problem is it's really not very effective. Um, it's not been, uh, the quality control has not been good throughout the world. And so it really isn't as useful um, as, it sh as it could be if we had a, a better vaccine. So in this country, we don't use BCG. Um, but the problem is that when people receive this in their country of origin, uh, they're told that this is going to make them positive for their life. And so they come to this country believing that their positive skin test is a result of this vaccine. The reality is that the vaccine wanes very uh, quickly, maybe even after a year. Um, so if a person has a significant uh, positive TB skin test and they're an adult and they had BCG as a child, the, the uh, reality is that that TB skin test is, mostly, is probably positive from natural TB infection. And the reason we can assume that is that they're only, it's only given in countries with lots of TB. So and there's a lot of confusion about it. And before we finish, um, we should talk, because there's been a lot of press recently about this uh, highly resistant uh, form of tuberculosis in a, a plane traveler that traveled uh, around the world recently, XDRTB. Can you quickly tell us a little bit about that and why we should be concerned about this? We're very concerned about this. Um, uh, XDRTB is tuberculosis that is resistant to all of the drugs that we normally would use to treat tuberculosis. Um, it's not necessarily more contagious than regular TB, but it's once a person is infected or becomes ill with it, it's very difficult to treat. Um, it can be you know, at least a two-year treatment involving injections. And the problem is that we don't always know that, that that's what we're treating. Many countries of the world don't have the laboratory technology to do the testing that's necessary to determine whether that strain of TB is resistant to these drugs. And so they may start treating the person with the wrong drugs, and that makes them increasingly more resistant. Okay, big, so it's big a problem. problem. Yes. So the message there would be if you're on these medications, stay on them. Don't let your organism become Absolutely. resistant. Absolutely, and, and we are there to help you through that. It's a difficult treatment, Great. and we're there to make sure that it goes well. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. We're now going to go to an exciting and educational uh, video piece that we've put together on West Nile virus, which is another emerging infection that we have to be concerned about here in California, particularly as the weather starts to get warmer and the mosquitoes start a buzzing. Hope you enjoy it.
This time, it happened in Alameda, California, close to homes, schools, and businesses, near the young and old. The victim was a lesser goldfinch. The killer was unimpressed by the bird's flight, unmoved by its sweet song. The strength of the killer overwhelmed the bird's defenses. It left the bird with wings too weak to fly, a throat too crippled to sing. But in death, it whispered the name of its killer, and science was listening. The killer was identified. It was the West Nile virus. West Nile virus is a mosquito-borne disease common in Africa, West Asia, the Middle East, and more recently, found in North America. Human infection with West Nile virus may result in severe human meningitis or encephalitis, an inflammation of the spinal cord and brain. West Nile virus was first isolated from a woman in the West Nile district of Uganda in 1937. It next materialized in Egypt in the 1950s. In 1957, there was an outbreak in Israel. The equine strain of the disease emerged in France in the early 1960s. Other outbreaks have occurred around the world. Health officials expect West Nile virus will continue to be an ongoing health risk worldwide. It's believed that it has now been established as a seasonal epidemic in North America, flaring in summer and continuing into fall. Most often, West Nile virus is spread by the bite of an infected mosquito. Mosquitoes become carriers when they feed on infected birds. The infected mosquitoes then spread the virus to humans and other animals when they bite. West Nile virus is not contagious. There is no current evidence it is spread person to person. It cannot spread through casual contact, such as touching or kissing a person with the virus, or by breathing in the virus. All donated blood is checked for West Nile virus before being used. The risk of getting the virus through blood transfusions and organ transplants is very small and should not prevent people who need surgery from having it. Transmission during pregnancy from mother to baby or transmission to an infant via breastfeeding is extremely rare. People typically develop symptoms from three to 14 days after they are bitten by an infected mosquito. Mild cases respond well to the same kinds of common treatments used for headache, fever, and body aches. The more severe forms of the illness usually require hospitalization. In rare situations, West Nile virus can cause death. There is currently no vaccine for humans against West Nile virus. Well, West Nile virus is really a, causes a spectrum of human illness. Um, most people don't have any symptoms at all when they're bitten by a mosquito that's infected with the West Nile virus. 80% of people won't feel anything at all. Only 20% of people will feel something, and most of those people will feel pretty much a mild um, fever, maybe a little bit of fatigue, but nothing all that specific that they would be able to say, aha, this may be West Nile virus. And only a very small portion of people, very unfortunate uh, number of people, about one out of every 150 that's infected with West Nile virus, will have uh, significant neurological symptoms, such as meningitis, which is inflammation of the brain and spinal cord, um, which causes pain and headaches. And for those that are slightly less fortunate, they'll have meningitis and encephalitis, which is inflammation of the brain and spinal cord, but also the brain itself will become inflamed and start causing symptoms, such as loss of consciousness, seizure, uh, coma, and in some unfortunate cases, eventually death. Birds are one of the main carriers of the disease. 
They can die or become ill. West Nile virus can be deadly for horses. However, an equine vaccine is available. Dogs and cats can be infected, but rarely become ill. They do not spread the virus. When it comes to West Nile virus, federal, state, and local government health experts have not been standing still. There are several methods used to detect and monitor the disease. Huling panawagan po sa kapwa Pilipino, kung kayo po ay meron tuberculosis, ito po ay nagagamot. Kaya kung kayo po ay pinuntahan ng public health nurse sa inyong bahay, importante po na kayo may cooperate at wag po pagtaguan ang ating mga health department. Okay, salamat po ng marami. We're very proud of our very diverse staff in the public health department. We have Chinese speaking, Vietnamese, Spanish speaking, and obviously Tagalog. And we work in the entire county and are very proud of that. Um, stay tuned for the West Nile virus as it comes up this summer. Thanks for coming. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next time.